Hey, David Breslow back here with you. I am the founder of Performance Success Strategies and the creator of Wired to Win. Today, I would like to have a talk with you about the word meaning, M-E-A-N-I-N-G, meaning. It's an interesting thing about us human beings that uh, many times we just don't realize or we just don't remember or we just forget that we are the ones who decide what meaning that we are going to attach to anything that happens. Yet, most of the people I talk to, most of the people I work with privately when we're, when we're doing coaching, and most of the people who will send me emails and follow-up reports on the digital version of Wired to Win will tell me at the beginning that they have so many things that they add meaning to, and they think that those are all the fires they have to put out. So in other words, they'll add meaning to a, a word that somebody says to them, and they'll get angry, and they'll get frustrated, and they'll defend themselves. Or an athlete or a golfer, let's say, will hit a tee shot out of bounds or into the water, and they get all upset and angry and frustrated about that, and continue to make poor choices after that, and that's because they added meaning. Here's an interesting example. I'll use the golf world for the moment. Uh, a golfer will call me and, and I'll ask him or her, so tell me, tell me what area you'd like to work on. Tell me what's an issue for you. And give me an example. And then I'll say something like, well, I go to the first tee and I, you know, after I went to the practice range and I'm feeling pretty good about my swing and I'm getting ready to start the round and I'm excited. And then my first shot is horrible. I hit it out of bounds or I miss hit it or whatever it may be. And they continue on with the story and they'll say, well, and then I get frustrated and then I get angry and then I make a bad decision on the second shot and I get myself in more trouble. And then I'm really ticked off at myself and I just want to get it over with, and I'm thinking that my round is ruined, and it's going to be a crappy day. They go on and on and on with the story. So when they're done with the story, a couple of minutes later, I'll say, okay, thank you. Uh, so tell me what happened when you hit that bad shot at the tee. Tell me what happened. And then they'll go through the story again, almost exactly the same. And then when they're done, of course, I say, okay, thank you. Uh, tell me what happened. And usually by the third time, they're getting a little frustrated with me. And they're telling me, hey, Dave, I just told you what happened twice or three times or twice already. I just told you what happened. Why do you keep asking me what happened? And here's the point I want to make. I, I want to make it with them. I did make it with them. And I want to make it with you who are listening to me right now. The point is what I said to them was, well, you want to know what really happened? And they'll say, yeah, well, I told you what really happened. I said, no, you didn't. Here's what really happened. You stepped up, you stepped up to the first shot on the first tee, and you hit a lousy shot. And then I stopped talking. And then invariably they'll say, well, what about the rest of it? And I'll say, what about it? You just made that up. That was a story you made up. And usually at that point, their, their, their jaw is dropping. If they don't understand what do you mean the rest of it doesn't matter and here's the point because this golfer added so much meaning to that one event which was just the first swing of the round that he told a story that was so filled with negativity and toxicity and self-judgment and criticism and worry and fear and doubt and all this stuff and this is these are the things that most people think they have to go work on that's what's interesting to me so whether it's somebody calls me for life coaching or golf coaching or actor coaching it doesn't matter what it is that they're so consumed with the story that they keep telling themselves and they think the story it has to be dealt with. All those little individual reactions to that story are what they believe has to be dealt with. So they call a coach. Hey, can you help me with this frustration and my reaction? 
and my anger and my self-criticism, and they'll, and they'll give you a beautiful list of all these things that they think should be worked on. But then you call somebody like me, and I say, no, 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 no. You, you don't need to work on those 10 different things. My gosh, that takes too long. That's too hard. That's not the issue. Okay, what's the issue, Dave? Well, the issue is the story you told yourself and the meaning that you added to it. So when I introduced this conversation at the beginning, I could have equally just said the word story as the word meaning, because they're really the same thing. So this golfer is telling this beautiful story and yet doesn't understand why they're so upset. And the answer is because they added meaning and they did not stop for a moment and, and be still for a moment in their own mind and say, wait a minute, what just really happened? Besides the story, what just really happened? Well, what really happened is I just hit a bad shot. Oh, okay. So here's where your power can now return to you. It's a power you always had, but you have given in to the story. You have made the story more powerful than you, the individual. And that is a crucial, crucial error. You are much more powerful than any story you will ever tell yourself. Okay? So, instead of falling apart with that story, that golfer now just stops for a minute. As soon as he feels a reaction coming on, he says, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What story am I telling myself? And then he, he, he hears the, the dialogue. Because you actually are talking to yourself. It's an inner dialogue. It's a story. You're telling yourself. as if there's two of you. One of you is telling the story and the other one is listening and believing it. Well, I'm suggesting to you that story is baloney. Don't listen to it. Don't believe it. Dismiss it. In fact, don't even let it get started. So if you can cut that story off before it even gets started, started by understanding that, wait a minute, I'm, I'm about to tell myself a story here. And just ask yourself this little check-in question. What really just happened? What really just happened. Oh, well, what really happened is I, I hit a lousy shot. Oh, okay. Yeah, but what about the rest of it? Your ego is going to kick in and want to get him to hold. Well, what about the rest of it, man? Well, and then you now understand, well, the rest of it doesn't mean anything. The rest of it's a story that you, you constructed quite beautifully, by the way. We're really good at telling stories of human beings. And the trick is starting to tell better stories. That's what we do in the in the learn to win coaching. We learn how to craft a better story, so that when something happens, the better story starts kicking in, not the old toxic ugly story. But for the purposes of this little conversation, I want you to start discerning the difference between what just happened and the lousy story that you run and run and run with and you believe it and you honor it. Don't, don't believe it and don't honor it because it's garbage. Just cut it off by asking yourself, what just actually really happened? Oh, what really happened is this person said something I didn't like. Okay. And from that point, you can have a new reaction because you can add a new meaning to it. You could actually say to yourself, I'm like, yeah, so what? You know, that's one person's opinion. Or to the golfer, okay, I just hit a lousy shot. What just really happened? Well, what really happened is I just hit a bad shot on the first tee. And that whole story that I usually tell myself is ridiculous. And you can start actually rationalizing quite consciously with yourself. Like, how could I tell myself that the rest of my round is going to be ruined? It's the first shot of the day. And you start laughing at yourself because you see how silly this is. Or this hole is ruined, or my round is ruined, or I can't use my driver for the rest of the day. All these crazy stories that golfers come up with, all these crazy stories that actors come up with. I'm a lousy actor. They didn't cast me. They didn't like me. Oh, I blew my monologue. I always, I always blow my monologue when there's three people sitting in front of me and two of them are men and one is a woman. I mean, I mean, the stories that we tell ourselves are just really ridiculous. Start laughing at them. They're ridiculous. So again, the main point, make a distinction 
between what actually really happened and the story that you're telling yourself. And one easy way, quick way to do that for the moment is to check in and say, well, wait a minute, what actually just really happened? And your brain, your mind will tell you what just happened. Oh, I just hit a bad shot on the 15th. Okay, so what? Yeah, I got a little nervous. People are watching. And I get a little nervous when I start my round. You know, I put a little pressure on myself. You talk to yourself. Be honest with yourself. Eh, you know, I actually didn't audition that bad. It was a, it was a you know, I could have done better. Maybe I, maybe I need to prepare more next time. Be honest with yourself. But don't start with the, with the darn story. The story is ugly. The story is toxic. Look, at, look around you. Look at the world around you. Listen to people's stories. You can tell that somebody's telling them a story. As soon as you see somebody have a lousy reaction to something, you know whether they tell you or not, because they're probably not going to tell you. They probably aren't even aware of it. You probably weren't even aware of your stories, maybe, before you heard this. But they're always telling a story. We are always, we are always telling a story. Always. And that story is playing out. That's how amazing the mind, body, emotion, and energetic connection is within us. And that's the essence of the teaching of Warrior Twin. Those are the four elements. So you tell a story and it's impacting your mind, your body, your emotions, and your energy. Because you believe it. That's all. It's just a story. You realize you have the power to tell a different story at any time you want. I don't care how long. How many years, how many decades you've been telling yourself the same kind of story over and over and over again. That you can tell yourself a different story in the snap of a finger. So I'll leave it at there for now. If you're interested in learning more, please visit www.mentalgolfcoaching.com or www.davebreslow.com. Leave a message here in cyberspace. I'd love to hear your reaction to this uh, audio and love to get into a cyber chat with you about it. But please consider how important the stories you tell yourself are and how foolish a high, high percentage of them are. They're just toxic. They're just toxic. And you can cut that off anytime you choose. So Dave Breslow, good to be with you again. I look forward to talking to you real soon. Good luck and check in on those stories. I think you're going to be really very pleasantly surprised. Take care.